Hello, everyone. I'm Dom Tiberi. Welcome to our Memorial Tournament Roundtable. I'm joined by Dave Holmes, Adam King from 10TV, and our buddies Anthony Rothman and Skip Mozick from our sister station, 97.1 The Fan. Dave, Jack Nicholas over the years has made a lot of changes to Muirfield Village. Recently, though, a, a major overhaul. Uh, you played the course the other day. Mm -hmm. How tough was it? What were your impressions? Yeah, I get to play it once a year at Media Day. They're not getting back to me on my membership application, Dom, so <laughs> that's my chance. Yeah, it was really cool, though. The course was very different. Uh, he, he claims he didn't make it harder for the members. I might take Jack the task on that. I think it's a tougher course. 15's a lot better look. The par 5, now you can actually see the green. It's more level. That was a big change. 4 became the biggest green on the course. 5, they kind of did a tweak on the green. So I think it's harder. I think the players are going to think it's, it's fun, though, and you have to make it harder because you kind of run out of real estate at some point when you're boxed in by houses. Mm -hmm. Skip, you too have played uh, Muirfield Village. Uh, you know, Jack says, hey, I got wide fairways, uh, but if you don't get in those fairways, you're dealing with bunkers everywhere, and the rough I understand, I, I haven't been up there yet. I, they don't, Jack has forbidden me from ever playing there again, but I, am, I understand you need a chainsaw to get out of the rough. It is so thick, Dom. It is unbelievable. And uh, for the professionals that will, that will be here at Muirfield Village, they're, they're all so good. Uh, their tee balls, more than likely, are always going to be in the fairway. It's a second shot golf course, as we've all talked about for years. But the, the one thing to keep in mind is it's so penal around the greens. And so if these guys miss the greens, the, the rough in and around the greens of those bunkers will always be tough, but uh, it's it's the rough around the greens, greens that are going to cause some guys some problems. You know, Adam mm -hmm. King, you're a kid that grew up in Columbus and uh, just, just down the road went to Gahanna High School and, you know, grew up watching this tournament. You finally <laughs> got a chance to play Jack's tournament. Um, what were your first impressions? And <laughs> Did he play the tournament? I, I was going to say, was he in? Are you well, guys, it's coming up next week. We didn't want to spoil it, it for It was a everybody. sponsor's exemption. Yeah. Yeah. Sponsor's I'm exemption. excited. I'm not, I'm just, I want to see if he's going to tell the truth because I have been told that, like me, forbidden, that there, there might be the, the Adam rule now. Hmm. I will say there were, there were some good moments and there were some bad moments, and in between there was a lot of fun had by all, and that's the goal of golf. <laughs> I think the one thing I took away from the, from the course – is that it's very, very, if you hit the fairway, it's it's not easy, but it's an acceptable course. What you did you play. shoot, Mr. Acceptable? I, I don't, I don't remember. I don't, we don't What count. did Mr. Acceptable shoot? I, you remember that he, shot he, on 13? It was a beautiful shot. He was in triple digits. Supposedly, he doesn't measure himself against other golfers. <laughs> no. He just basically <laughs> said, hey, if you get in the fairway, uh, it's an easy no. course. I no. know he picked up a few holes. That's all I will say. He picked uh, up a few holes. Oh, okay. I, yeah, I, and, but there were some holes that I won for our group. Let's not forget. Okay. Um, but I will say the course, if you're in that rough, it was, it's unbelievable. The way it grabs your club, it, you can't hit out of it. But I will say I was, I was pleasantly surprised at the ability of some of the shots from the fairway that I could see how these pros, if you – on Sunday I can imagine that the person that finds the most fairways – is going to win this tournament. And it's, and it's not always that simple with courses, but I could see that at Muirfield. You know, Anthony, you, like everyone, has also played it. I used to play it, and but, you know, I, I got to the point where, you know, it's like usually either my first or second round of golf, and <laughs> you, you have to walk at Muirfield, and, A, you, you're out of breath by the time you're done. You feel like you've gone ten rounds. You're in the rough. You're in the trees. But what it really has done for me is give me a great appreciation of how just good these, these pros are that they yeah. go out and they shoot under par on that golf course. Well, you also forgot about you're in the streams. You forgot about oh, that. Yeah, you yeah. had the rough and the trees. Yeah. Add the streams, maybe some backyards. <laughs> We're not <laughs> sure. So let me kind of put this into perspective. I agree with you. I play 99% of my rounds on a cart. I'm sure you guys do as well. That walk up and down those hills, seven miles. What a caddy. And, <laughs> yeah. then, and then for this guy, that's the hardest thing because he takes – takes the wallet out and is in and all of his dead presidents have sunglasses on because they haven't seen the, the, the daylight i tipped and my caddy on, and you're the record can, show i tipped my caddy. he gave his caddy a business card it said you call me if you know i gave him i gave him hey invest in this i gave, I gave him money and a 20 percent off at bed bath and beyond you, bar that you can use at any any local store i i Walking up and down those hills is my point seven <laughs> miles is a bear pun yeah. intended yeah and well, I'll illustrate it for, like, the average golfer. They've got four par fours at that place that are 470 yep. or longer. Well, I don't play golf that way, and neither do you. So that should give people the analogy they want. Yeah. The other thing is 
I add about 10 strokes. If I'm a seven handicap out there, if I get to play it once a year and I don't judge Smales that thing and fluff it up or <laughs> kick it into the fairway, if I play it legit, I add 10 strokes for difficulty and another two to five for nerves, which means to me that a seven handicap should have trouble breaking 85 there. Right. Serious yeah. trouble. Oh, yeah. Probably breaking 90 would be the goal. Mm -hmm. So if a seven handicap's goal is to break 80 on his home course, it's 90 there. Yeah. Minimum. All right. all right. For all you guys, we're going to finish with this. We'll start with you, Skip. What is your favorite hole there to play, and what hole do you think is the best for if for, for someone that's watching us, what's the best hole to go watch golf? Although I've never made par there, my favorite hole to play is 14. No doubt about it. It's, the, it's one of the mm -hmm. best short par fours in the world. And uh, it, there's just so many different things that can happen to you when you play that hole. And like I said, even though I don't know that I've ever even come close to sniffing a par on that hole, yeah. I would play it every single day if I could. Favorite place to watch? You know, I always have the popular spots, 9, 12, 14 is a good amphitheater, 17 is a great amphitheater. I like to go out to three. I like to be by three green, watch them come in. You see them up close and personal to putt. You just walk up the hill and you can watch them tee off on four. Mm -hmm. Anthony, favorite hole to play? Wow. Best place to watch the tournament. I go out there now not for a score anymore. I go out there for highlights once a year, so it'll always be 12. It's the signature hole. I hit it to a couple feet a couple years ago, hit it way left this year, made a great up and down, though, uh, this year for par there. I love it. We rarely get that Sunday pin during media day. It would be great to have it all the way on the right side, but I think that I'm always looking for something where could I even dream of acing a hole that Jack Nicklaus designed. So for me, it's always going to be 12. For the fans, I recommend two places. I recommend 10th tee box. That's a 470 yard par four that plays uphill. And if you've ever watched a pro hit a tee shot, it's like watching a jet plane take off. They ha the, key the tee shot is very key at 10. I love watching a world class pro hit a tee ball. And then the other one is the one Skip said, which is 14, because undoubtedly that's a 360 yard par four that has so much teeth. It may be one of the toughest, shortest par fours in the world. And we know one thing, many shots will be made there, many shots will be missed there, and the tournament could turn at 14, which it has for years, Tiger being the most notable. Dave? Okay, so 12 and 14 are the two, the two cliche obvious choices. <laughs> no, they are. Those are, those are two of the best holes. So if I had to pick a third one, it's nine. I love the little downhill yeah. par four over the water. You're not hitting a long shot in there, but it's still difficult. A sneaky place to watch this year, something new, is to go to 16T. They have this kind of two-sided cabana thing going on up there where you can walk through and watch 16's tee, and there's the back of the tent you can watch through or walk through and watch 15's green. So you see the end of a par five and the start of a really good par three. Well, Dave just took exactly what I was going to say. That's why you don't sit there. You I never know, sit you there. don't sit because no. I was just thinking about that cabana. Yeah. We saw it. It was very cool. Yeah. And the idea on Sunday to be able to see the end of a par five and, and to be able then to turn to 16 and see really what could be a deciding factor on the tournament would be great. I will say there was something incredibly special about walking down the hill at nine just because so often you see that shot and to be able to do that for the first time, it really felt like you were playing Mirfield. It felt like the magic of Mirfield. And then 12 is 12 is 12. I mean, it's yeah. the most beautiful hole on the course. I didn't go beautiful for me. So it, you know. Let, let's not lie. The halfway house really was the highlight, correct? <laughs> Everything was on Jack's tab. All you could well, I had a killer milkshakes. brat. They do the brat thing where they wrap it in kind of the butter toast. It's mm. oh. killer brat. Killer brat. All and right. then whatever you don't want, you can feed to the begging carp. Yeah. And they <laughs> are as big. big. As, oh they are mutant goodness. carp. Oh. Yes. Uh, for me, number eight is my favorite hole, the oh, par yeah. three. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. Back in 1983, I played in a pro am out there. That's back when they actually let you know you yep. could you could play in the pro am. And so I was in the pro am, and I teed off on that par three, and I hit a ball this close to the pen. Really? Well, I, everyone was screaming. Everything was and and it, it's it a was good like three. You oh, made a good three there. And, and I, <laughs> no, I, oh. I had a not even I could oh, miss that yeah. birdie. It's I just funny kept that, it in for birdie. The first time I heard that in 2015, it was this far. Right? Like, <laughs> no, it was, it was, and, and, it, and it keeps every yeah, year it I was, hear it. It was, yeah. it was, it was down to that. Little, Next little, year, uh, that ball went in the hole. Yeah, it was a little <laughs> tap. And at my favorite place to watch the golf and 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 just the people watch. I love 18. Yep. I just love mm -hmm. sitting there. Oh, you great. can look over on the on the other side and watch them tee off on 10. But I just love the spectacle that is the 18th hole. Hey, be sure and keep it on 10 TV and 97.1 The Fan for all your Memorial Tournament needs.